so I um, just flew from the United States. Um, I was there for a week. Um, I attended the United Nations um, Summit, which is called the Family Office Summit, where there were uh, more than $2 trillion in assets which were represented. But what was more unique, what I found in the room, were the relationships and the unique perspective that every individual brought to the table. And that echoed my point, which I want to put forward today in my TEDx talk in front of you all and people watching, is the concept of human life value. There is a stark difference between value of a human life and human life value. When we say value of human life, whenever any individual is born, or whenever any individual dies, we lose a, a specific individual, and whenever an individual is born, there is a big, big value attached to an individual, but that is pretty much the physical value of an individual. But when I talk about human life value, it is much, much more than just value of human life. It has intangible aspects attached to it, like the relationships uh, a person builds over, over time, like a um, um, lot, of, lot of different attributes that a person gathers over time, education, and a lot of intangible aspects which you cannot um, just see physically or cannot touch. I just want to use this small example as a use case. If you see, this is a small boy who had a lot of ambition, a lot of relationships to change our country and to do stuff in the world. And there are a lot of other individuals who do it, right? And then he, be he went on to become the prime minister of this country. That is why I feel the concept of human life value is really important. And that is what I want to draw from this example. Just to give you a small background of human life value, it is pretty much same as the concept of life insurance industry. When you talk about life insurance, 100 years back, in the United States, they were just selling five to ten thousand dollar life insurance policies. Do you know why? That was because it was just taking into account that we need to bury an individual after an individual dies. But what it did not take into account was the loss in time or the loss of a specific individual who could have done so much, so much in this world. And hundred years from now, Life insurance policies sell at 5 to $10 million each. And that is because now life insurance policies take into account relationships, ambition, health, and so on and so forth, and other parameters. This is also pretty much tantamount. I want to uh, uh, bring the example of oil, of how oil was unlocked and unleashed in the Middle East. When we talk about oil, the value of oil when it is under the ground is zero, right? But when we unlock the value of oil through technology, then we, you know, bring it to life. And when we unleash the value of oil by making products like gasoline, etc., we are actually able to use oil to its advantage. That is why I want to put this example forward where I say that human life value is pretty much tantamount to oil and we need to unlock and unleash it. Considering we are in the fifth industrial revolution, it is very easy for us to use technologies like artificial intelligence, internet of things, machine learning, etc. to use all this technology to unlock and unleash human life value. Once again, we love to remind you all, human life value takes into account all intangible aspects. There are a lot of individuals in this room and people watching this video who would have different kind of ambitions. You would have different kind of relationships that you build over time. You would gain different kinds of education over time. We need to take all that into account and imagine the kind of exponential increase that you will have in a person's value over time if we unlock and unleash it. India is a, is a country which, which I believe that is going to be the, the country which is going to lead in human life value and I have a lot of examples to support it. The first 
think that India is a country of 1.3 billion population and we are the youngest population in this whole world with over 350 million youth under the age of 24, no other country has it. So the demographic dividend that we are going to reap in the future is absolutely insane and amazing and no other country can do it. That is why I say that India has a strategic potential when it comes to the concept of human life value. Another thing, the synergies that we are going to develop in India with 1.2 billion pil, uh, uh, population working together is going to be an exponential increase and no other country can possibly do it. And that is why I feel that India has the strength. The third, the literacy rate of India is 74%, which, is going to, which indicates that human life value again is going to be the concept where India has the strategic potential to um, lead and steward this concept. So we have, I believe that India currently is a country of strategic potential. But I want to stress the point that let's not just be a country of strategic potential, let's be a country of strategic realities. So let's go from a kind being of a country from strategic potential to strategic realities. How do we do that is going to be the focus of my next talk. Thank you so much.